Okay, we'll get started. This is uh, Seth Hillbrand. He's talking about in improving uh, design outcomes in, with, in KiCad with diversity and inclusion principles. He's the design engineer for the physics department of uh, University of California, Davis. He designs circuits to support <laughs> research projects that look for a dark matter, uh, try to measure hidden photons and records physical processes in extreme environments. Previously, he worked in high altitude ballooning, space science, and electromagnetic warfare. If you ask him, he won't tell you what he did. Uh, he is uh, currently one of the developers of the KiCad project. Welcome, Seth. Thank you. So I appreciate your all joining uh, me here today. If you're interested in any of those uh, dark matter, um, high energy stuff, I'll be talking later on this afternoon in the other room uh, about those topics. But I wanted to take a moment at this technical conference to talk about how we as a community can uh, work to improve the overall health of our community and sustain it long, long term. So part of my process, so this is why this talk, part, part of my process at UC Davis involves designing circuits for extended periods of time uh, where we need to have active, supported software for 20 years into the future. And this is our, this is our timeline. Open source has a tendency to eat its own and communities will rise and fall as, as this happens. And one of the ways in which we as a community come together to build that is, is, in, our, uh, is in our support of each other and our willingness to bring in larger segments of the community and support them as they find their feet in, into, uh, into our environment, into our ecosystem. And so that's why inside of a technical conference, I want to talk about our long-term uh, long health of, of the community and, and who is the beneficiaries of this. Frankly, it's, it's, it's all of us, which is why me as a, you know, a apparently cisgendered white guy is a, a giving this talk because I want to see this. This is, this is what I like to see in, in, in our community uh, going, uh, going forward. So on the internet, where we all interact, aren't we all just the same? The, the, we, we, we look there as, uh, look the same in this, am I too loud? Okay, all right, and yes, Right, a famous, famous, famous cartoon from the uh, New Yorker on the internet. No one knows you're a dog. Uh, the one dog talking to the other. But this, this is only true for half of the conversation. Because you know who you are, and your interaction with the community affects whether or not you want to be there tomorrow, and whether or not you want to be there the the day after, and that can impact how we as a large group are, are able to uh, sustain ourselves long term. And the second bullet point there is this diversity and inclusion thing just kind of code for you know, other, other topic, depending on where you uh, get your come from. Uh, you may have some ideas about what this looks like. And for my talk, this is actually just about us, about our bringing a, a community as community writ large into uh, KiCad and, su and supporting them, and so supporting you. So this right here, technological talks are going to benefit us today and tomorrow, and sociological talks, this is uh, wh what we're going to be looking far into, uh, far into the future. So how do we keep ourselves healthy over the 10-year time frame? Now I'm going to pull out a few things out of the bug tracker just because that's where I spend a lot of time. Similar things happen in Yahoo groups. That's kind of one example of eating itself. Yahoo groups got extremely toxic and chased a lot of people away. And Chris, to his great credit, said, that really sucks. Let's build a better community where people can 
get answers and and more importantly where we constrain the tone of the conversation to be about KiCat and not about other things. Um, and so Bug Tracker doesn't have that, so I pull some, uh, some things out of the Bug Tracker here. Um, I, to the extent that I can, I'm going to kind of uh, anonymize mo most of this. Now, you've benefited already from KiCad's inclusive nature. First of all, because we're bigger than ever. We're larger than ever. And this is not just because the code's gotten better, but also because the community's gotten better. People come in, developers come in, I came in, because there is a large community that supports people who want to get involved in, in, in KiCad. Now, you might not n notice where you've benefited from this, but I'm gonna pull out one bug here that this bug showed up last year. PCB new crashes sometimes, loses every single track on the board, and worst thing that you could do is try to open PCB new again, because then it's gonna overwrite your backup. This lost everything for multi multiple boards. This was a horrific bug, and I hope that you never ran into it. And you might even not even know that this bug existed. But if you look down, 47 reports in through four developers, and five different bug reporters all working on the same thing, trying to figure out exactly how to recreate this because it wasn't easy to recreate and, uh, and how to fix it. Without that interaction, without that large group of people, that large community all looking at the same thing, you might have found this bug. This bug might have gotten into the release because it was really hard to recreate. And that right there is our, is our primary benefit to how we, uh, how we Im improve by bringing more larger groups of people, 40, 47, 47 reports in it, 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 it got fixed and this was a, this was a bug that uh, lived in the code base for a year and a half and you probably never saw it. And I, I, nev I never, never saw it, but we get to benefit from the inclusion of others in our uh, in our community so this involves bringing perspectives in that are not our own and this problem with individual perspectives hits even engineering and I, it is not just that we are trying it's not that we are trying to avoid certain topics, it's that we, we might not even see them. And as an example, you might have seen this, engineering here, designing a soap dispenser. The circuit has stopped working for one person in particular, but it works if your skin color happens to be a little bit lighter. And you can imagine that if I had tested this, I would have seen a working circuit. And if many of you had tested this, you would have seen a working circuit. It takes an additional perspective to actually come up with the idea that Oh, this circuit might not actually work for everybody. Now, this is, this is a toy example, and this is not KiCad specific. This is just toy examples for in engineering uh, 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 specific. Similar things happen in our, uh, in our code base, and similar things happen in any point in which we engage in, uh, in engineering that interacts with, uh, with the user. So, how do we, how do we how do we think about this? Well, in diverse teams, which are teams that have different perspectives, which we get from larger groups of people, bringing larger people, actually make better decisions. Actually make better decisions than smart teams. Because smart teams still have these same 
blind spots. And so I want to bring more people. I want more people feeling comfortable in KiCad. I want more people coming into KiCad with those perspectives that I don't have, that I am missing, that our development team, maybe as many that our user community is missing. And as we bring those in, we avoid our blind spots. But these first steps are hard, and it involves uh, communication. And lots of that communication will happen in public because we are a public list. We're, we're, we're a public project. Most of our communication happens in public forum lists on the, on the, uh, on the IRC chat, on Twitter. All of this happens in responses in public oftentimes are quick and oftentimes are maybe not as reflective as we might otherwise be when we communicate when we communicate in private so when do we reach out to the community <laughs> we reach out to the community when we're stuck and we're when we're stuck we're pretty frustrated as a group you know, we're, you run into a problem and you reach and you reach out sometimes this communication, when we're frustrated, is slightly more edgy than we might choose to communicate if we were to, if we were to think about it. So this, as an example, from, from our bug tracker, again, what, what, what we're uh, dealing, uh, what we uh, work, work on when we communicate, things like this. And if you wanted to try to sort out from, the, from this what the actual issue is, you might have a problem. You might have difficulty in finding what you're supposed to fix here. So when we, when we communicate, one of the ways that we can drive a more open, more, more inclusive community is by focusing on KiCad by focusing on the software, by focusing on the technical issues, and skipping a step of personalization. Because when we personalize things, we, we can create conflict. If we personalize KiCad, we're fighting with KiCad. If we uh, personalize our interactions, then it becomes much easier to actually drive that interaction into a uh, a, a conflict between you and the external, uh, the external world, but it's imaginary because we don't have two sides. The people you're asking for help want to help you. The people I ask for help, I'm asking because they're looking to help me. And so there aren't two sides here. We, we, we have a single side. So when we, when we talk about this, we should focus on our, tech, uh, on, on our technical aspects, and this creates better conversations around KiCad. But if we're responding, and that doesn't, and that doesn't exist, how do we respond to a, to a question, a query that helps the community, that drives this forward? How do we, how do we uh, engage with someone who might not read that first slide or might not want to use that first slide and still improve KiCad because that will still happen. Well, I'm going to go for a couple, uh, couple examples. First, decide whether you want to respond because the first step in communicating in a compassionate manner is deciding whether or not you're going to be able to communicate in a compassionate manner, and whether or not that's going to harm you as in your, uh, in your communication. Because communi anger-filled communication will actually create, reflects back on us, and it, and, it, and it actually hurts us in the same time that it projects this out into a, into a larger community. So, First and foremost, make sure that you're protecting yourself. And then you have, once you decide, OK, I'm going to go in, I'm going to dive in, I'm going to help this person. How do you get a person who's frustrated, who's angry, who's mad at 
KiCad, Mad at the Community, to engage positively and engage with the community in a way that creates us, uh, creates a, a, an open and more welcoming environment for other people to jump in. Well, one, one way to do that, to start with, is, is called a, a reflective response. So, so what you're doing is you're starting by summarizing what you think you've heard. This is particularly important in KiCad because we're an international community and the question might come from someone who's, for whom English is not their first language and they might not, they might not be expressing themselves well. So you re reflect back the question and as you reflect back the question, you are deepening your own understanding and the, and the person who's asking the question gets to respond to, uh, to, a clarif uh, to a clarified. So if I understand you correctly, what you're looking for is blank. So if once you have that, you can ask a question that has yes as an answer. And the reason you might want to do that is to prime in the person who you're talking with, to prime in their mind that, the, uh, that this is a positive interaction. And this sounds hokey because you know we're, we're engineers and, and, and we might not actually be fully uh, uh, read on, on psychological research, for instance. If you, pri if you prime positive interaction, you're more likely, substantially more likely, to get that positive interaction back. So you ask a question that has yes as an answer. And so my example here, hi, hey, it, it sounds like there's a frustrating experience. So you first, what you're doing is you're engaging with a level of empathy and then asking a question, would you be willing to help us to do X? So this person wants to fix X, I already know this. And now I'm asking, would you be willing to help us to do this? And the answer is of course yes, because they want their problem fixed. And as that answer is yes, the response is much more likely to be positive. And writing this is not easy. Because the first response is, oh, you're coming at this with the frustration. You're primed to respond to that with frustration. So you start there and move, move forward. This gets us past the me versus world. So then, oh my god, what if someone is wrong on the internet? We might actually get something here that we need to, that, that I, I, need to, I need to fix. How to get that idea across? How do you correct somebody while posting online? Well, in or, without actually creating that me versus them conflict, because again, there's no me versus them, it's us, it's, it's KiCad. So you identify your goals, and then you reframe your understanding as a question because then you get to be the one who's maybe, maybe wrong, which might happen. It, it happens to me frequently. And then you hit them with, I mean, this is kind of beginner, like team building sort of thing, but you hit them with this, this, this compliment sandwich. So what does this mean? This says you start with, a specific compliment, one thing specifically in what they are suggesting that you think is a great idea. You start there. So, oh, thank you for your contribution. I like your approach to improve. I like this thing, and I honestly do. I, I, I like this thing that this person is suggesting. Now, the meat of the sandwich is that constructive feedback, the thing that they're wrong about, that you want to correct. The meat of the sandwich, so, uh, there are a couple changes that I'd like to see under Linux specifically. Can you do this, 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 and this, right? There's the meat of the sandwich. And then, critically, the last thing that you leave them with, the last thing that they read that primes their response is this generalized compliment again. And here, otherwise, it looks great, 
Now, just FYI, might 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 be a week that before we can get this get this in. Thanks again for your hard work on this. This right here creates positive response and gets the correction and gets the correction that that we need. This makes a person feel better about their their contribution. And although this is on the bug tracker. It applies to everything. It applies to how we engage with people who might need um, a slight correction in maybe their understanding of how a, you know, the difference between a footprint and a symbol, right? or, or some other some other misunderstanding that you'd like to uh, that you'd like to help them understand better, because that right there is the goal of the communication. That right there is the goal of the communication that brings all of this together. So is this really about diversity and inclusion? Yes. It, it's not all diversity and inclusion because I have 20 minutes and I don't have the answers to have, uh, all of this, but this right here is necessary. Listening and including additional people in our conversation is the first step, necessary step, and helps us to build a healthier, better, and more sustainable KiCAD community that lasts for the foreseeable future. So I'll just leave this up at the end. If you want to help, if you want some help, if you run into problems, and uh, you, know, you or the people who will eventually watch this um, video online. If you're interested in engaging with this or you run into problems and you don't want to engage, you would like to protect your own mental health but you need to, uh, you, you need to raise an issue, feel free to reach out. I'm very contactable uh, both on the forums and on uh, email and I'm happy to talk about this um, or any other topic. So thank you for um, coming to my talk. <laughs> Any questions? Um, in, in your opinion, <clears throat> what role does uh, active moderation on the forum play in this? Oh, uh, thank you. Yes, I, I, um, active moderation um, is the way that we focus the conversation on KiCad, and no, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, mention that I'm not a moderator, but I have so much respect for the moderators of the forum because they deal with the uh, with the ne with a lot of negative a, a lot of negativity, but it doesn't last on the forum. Um, it, I don't know if you're ever a part of the Yahoo groups, but th that. Um, there were a number of things that came up. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, curved tracks, always a great one to get flame wars going. Um, this was, uh, th this caused like, like friendships to dissolve and, and really hindered more people coming in to actually ask for help. Because if you go into the forum and you read and you see that the responses are getting flames are getting these longtime members like trouncing each other, there is much less chance that you want to actually stick your neck out and ask a question because it, the response might be just that negative and you might not have the bandwidth to deal with it that day. And so the act of moderation in the forums provides the content of the forum because the act of moderation removes the posts from view provides that the content of the forum is focused on KiCad and focused on solving problems. So that encourages additional, that encourages this uh, uh, additional engagement and brings larger sections of the community in who might otherwise not feel comfortable. So I, I, th I think it's you know, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I started using KiCad after using JITA for about 10 or 20 years. And oh, yes. JITA, exact example of what you're talking about, the yeah. whole community just dissolved. It, yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I wasn't 
sure whether I was going to mention <laughs> Gita, but but yeah, I I also used Gita in the past, and it was um, uh, it there, there were a large number of factions, and you were in one faction or another. I mean, they're they're still going, but they've gotten they've gotten smaller and smaller. And one of the reasons I I mean personal opinion here, but one of the reasons is KiCad's very open and welcoming. Like if you want to come and Use, use KiCad, there are people who will spend hours helping you learn this. It, it, I am always amazed at, at how, um, how helpful, how willing people are to donate their own time to help new users work through issues and not so new users like figure out uh, figure out figure out bugs. It's very, it's very collaborative so I, I, I think that has, I mean it speaks volumes to uh, all of you uh, who are the ones who are actually out there um, making the community better for people. Um, I was actually very surprised to find out that um, difficult bug submitters is an axis of diversity that, like I had overlooked it. I would, <laughs> I would normally just, I would do Zen Elder. I'd remove myself oh, from okay. the equation. I'd fire, well, I'd fire well, the customer. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I guess my, my question is, are there any other surprising forms of inclusion? <laughs> like I thought I was gonna get All into right. like, like, uh, like I, expensive I users versus cheap users. Uh, okay, this is, uh, so I'd so I'd like to I'd like to clarify a, a little bit. Um, I chose some of the difficult means of communication on the bug tracker, not because I feel like uh, difficult bug submitters are an underrepresented group in any way, shape, or form, um, or that they need special protection. Um, my only point in, 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 in showing those was because um, uh, toxic communication creates a toxic environment. And if you, uh, if you create a community that is uh, damaging to itself, then uh, you're going to chase everyone away. And diversity isn't about one group or another, it's about the whole community. And inclusion, you can't include one group and not include another group and call, and, and call it inclusion. We're, we're looking to actually bring more more perspective in, and the only way we do that is by decreasing the uh, the, or, or I should say by, well let's let's reframe that positively by by, by incre increasing the amount of positive communication that we have, which is hopefully what I was um, trying to trying to get to is that even if there is difficult communication and everyone gets frustrated, I get very frustrated. I've I've made some frustrated. Bug comments um, it, by by actually um, uh, facilitating positive communication out of bad communication, we bring more people. More people are willing to actually get involved in the community. So, um, regardless of of you know, the, how your communication style. And I'm not sure if these these uh, bug committers actually spoke English as a first language. That might just have been like a bad Google Translate. I'm not sure. Yeah. Ooh, that's electric. Um, so you talked a little bit about how there's uh, challenges with growing the community. I don't know all that much about the history of KiCad or KiCad for that matter. Um, <laughs> I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about the, the challenges with growing and, and um, how you've been involved. Well, um, so I'm going to, uh, let me caveat my response by saying my opinion may not be reflective of everyone's opinion on, uh, on either the best ways to grow the community um, or like how that has happened in, in the past. But, um, you want to be involved in something that makes you happy. Or, to put it another way, if something makes you sad, you're gonna do it less. Everyone involved in KiCad is a volunteer. No one is getting paid for a full-time job to do KiCad. And even those people who do get paid some amount of money are donating way more of their time than they're getting, than they're getting paid for. So, 
how do you in encourage more people to give more of themselves? You create an environment that they want to be in. So growing the community, growing uh, the developers, growing the uh, user support community, growing the ecosystem around it involves creating a group that is fun. Like if you ask any of the developers, they'll tell you they have fun working with the group. They're, they're, they're not doing it be, for any other reason than it's enjoyable for themselves. And so creating an environment that is pleasant, that is enjoyable for more people is, uh, uh, is a method of sustaining, growing our community and, and kind of pushing that, uh, pushing that forward. So. Maybe to synthesize a point that you were uh, mm -hmm. kind of making, or at least from the examples you pulled out, um, is, is, it, is it okay to say that maybe one of your uh, points that you're making today is uh, we don't have control over the initial contact. Someone, you know, mm -hmm. gets frustrated as a new uh, keycad and, uh, and doesn't, you know, gets frustrated, right. turns to the bug tractor to uh, to report a bug or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but your point is that it's the reaction and it's the response. Well, we have control over our initial contact yeah. and we can create, so, the, so and we can create um, better engagement for the small group of people who have, you know, we, as a group, create better engagement on our first contact, but we're going to engage with the others in the community. And absolutely, we can't control what, what they bring into that first contact, but we can model the behavior that we want to see. And the more that we model that behavior, the more that behavior becomes a community norm and the more that becomes self-supporting and the more that community then becomes open and engaging to anyone who wants to come in and engage with us. Seeing no other questions, let's give Seth a hand. Right. Thank you, Thanks. Seth.